Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video then we're going to actually, where we had the log here, I don't have it anymore, I have a hash uh, make trade because I was fiddling about with the code before this video and I've forgotten what code was there before. I'm pretty sure there was a log just saying we have decided to make a trade of X number of units. What we need to do now is replace that code here or this hash here with the actual code to place a trade. Now this is not quite as simple as writing self.api and trade because we need to look for a couple of things and I want to explain those because there are some gotchas with this. We're using something called the moving average cross strategy and I've got uh, just the Australian dollar, US dollar, one hour candles here but the point is there's some crosses on the screen here that we can see with the lines. Hang on, can I make these lines a, a little bit thicker so we can see them? Okay, so we trade cross to cross with our strategy of moving average crosses. That means in, in this cross here in the middle we would put a buy on and then we would close that buy and place a sell at this cross here. Now what are the issues that can arise with that or what do we need to be aware of? So let's imagine we place this buy and then we detect a cross. What we actually need to be able to do is ask the Oanda API to please give us the open trades on the particular currency in question because we need to close them before we open this new trade. Now if we place this sell before we close the buy we're actually placing what's known as a hedge. So that's where for a given pair, the same pair, if you have a sell and a buy on at the same time, so opposite directional trades, you're doing what's known as hedging. Now by default in Oanda, your demo account doesn't have hedging enabled. Now you can go onto the admin page for Oanda and make yourself a sub account of your demo account and enable hedging on it. But you'd need to be aware with Oanda, and this depends on different platforms how this behaves, but if I have a buy on with Oanda, let's say for a thousand units of this currency, and you can see that the trade has hopefully yep appeared down the bottom here and I now put a sell on without closing the buy something interesting happens you might expect that the buy gets automatically closed and the sell goes on but what actually happens is the sell doesn't go on and the buy closes so if inside our code in this case here we have this cross we place our buy we fail to close the buy or just forget to do it in our code and try and open the sell the net effect is we'll have no trades on we will close the buy but we won't uh, have the sell on so that's something to be aware of and I can remember when I very very first started trading I got a little bit confused when I was doing demos and code and all sorts of stuff as to why some trades just weren't going on or anything and then I found it was due to issues with opening and closing of the trade so that's something to be aware of. So into our code then that means we need a little bit more logic in here than we might think. We need to get the open trades for the pairs that we want to trade and then we need to close those before then opening our new trades. And as ever we're not going to do this by writing some spaghetti code inside this function I like to keep things as small as possible we're going to create a new file called trade underscore manager dot pi and in there we're going to write a class which can do this uh, stuff for us and also allow us to extend functionality without making the bot code too confusing. So to start with I'm going to paste in the definition of the trade manager class we're going to go quite quickly here because there's really not much that you haven't already seen which is good news th throughout the course. You can get the code of course from github, pause the video, copy, do whatever you like. You'll notice the initialization of this with settings API log it's actually extremely similar to the technicals class and in fact we have almost identical code. In reality you would probably want to write yourself a base class here and then uh, inherit from this base class that you don't need to duplicate all of your code here. In our case we're not going to do that we're going to plow on like this to keep everything uh, as short as possible. So thinking about the logic we need three pieces to our trade manager. First of all we need a function which we'll call place trades. This will take in a list of objects and they're not going to be classes they'll just be pure objects with keys and values that we'll define inside the bot. We'll come to that and this will say what trades we need to make. So it'll be a list of objects with the pair and the number of units we want to trade and we'll log that to the screen. Now when we've placed our trades what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to close our trades. So for every pair that we want to trade we need to close any existing trade. So we'll make a close trades function and in there we'll get the list of pairs so just purely the euro US dollar, Australian US dollar and so on and that list will go through to try and close them. To know what we've got open though for each of these pairs we first of all need to ask the API what trades are open. And this is the first point where things can be dangerous and I keep repeating this throughout the course because I'm really really conscious of uh, problems and believe me there are problems because I've been through most of them. Um, here we know that we return from the API open trades false if there is something has gone wrong with the request. And here our solution for just for this course is to log into our log. We've had a problem fetching our open trades. Of course with real money you have to put something else inside here. Your request has gone wrong that means you've not been able to get the list of trades that are currently open for whatever reason. Your internet connection, problems with the Oanda API, don't know. But you need something else in here maybe to try again a few times, reset the connection 
connection, uh, send you an SMS if it really can't get there, because this, of course, is a very key, important part of the strategy in question. We have to be able to close the trades that uh, we need to close. Now, when we get these trades, we get them back as a list, if I remember correctly, from uh, where is it? Open Trades. We get a list of these OANDA trade objects. Now, going into OANDA trade class, you'll remember that we've got this ID. We're just going to trade, change this to trade underscore ID because it's going to make things easier to read later on. I got a bit confused when I just had ID. So I'm going to change that to trade underscore ID. And back inside the trade manager then, you'll remember that, uh, or sorry, back inside the OANDA API, you'll remember that when we close a trade, we have to send in this trade ID here to actually close the trade. That means we need to get a list of the IDs of the open trades that we have. And more importantly, we need a list of the IDs only where the trades pair is the same as one of the pairs in this list of pairs to close. And we called the pair, not pair, but instrument because it was called instrument in the OANDA object. So we need to say we want give us a list of the IDs of the open trades where the instrument part of that trade is inside this list of pairs to close. Quite a mouthful to say all that. In reality, we've done it lots of times already throughout the course, just a bit of list comprehension to give ourselves a list of IDs to close. And we get the trade ID for each of the items in open trades if the instrument is in pairs to close. What we'll do then is a mass of logging to the screen just to check in the log that uh, everything was okay. So we've got our pairs to close, the open trades that we found and the IDs that we selected to close. So for example, you've got 10 trades open, let's say, two pairs you want to close. You should see, should see then a list of 10 open trades and here two IDs should pop out corresponding correctly to the pairs to close. It's something that you would want to check in the log to make sure everything's working. And now we need to do is go ahead and close the trades using the API. So we for T in IDs to close, we'll ask the API, please close our trade. Now remember, we get again, uh, a true or false back if we've managed to close the trade correctly or not. Serious stuff if uh, we haven't managed to close the trade. So let's log that we failed to close. Uh, otherwise, then we can just log that we closed the trade and we don't need that uh, brackets T inside there. So we've got the functionality written now to close the trades. So going back down into place trades, let's just implement that. Now I said that this was a list of objects and one of the keys on those objects is just called pair. And I want a list of the pairs in just the pure string, so euro, US dollar, etc., to be able to send to that uh, close trades function. So I'm going to say that our list of pairs is equal to x pair for x in trades to make. And you'll see this trades to make be made inside the bot. Once we have that list, we can and then try to close all of our trades. And that means we've got one last thing to do, and that is to actually create the trades that we want to make. So we'll write a new function and call that create trades, and we'll send in our list of trades to make, and then we'll loop through each of the trades that we want to make. Remember by now, we've assumed that we've managed to close all of the trades corresponding to the pairs of the trades that we want to make. So for each trade then, we're going to get a trade ID back for placing a trade using our API where we send in the pair name and we send in the units. And here's the very tricky thing. If we don't get an ID back, something has gone wrong. We'll say that if the trade ID is not none, so we do have a trade ID back, then we've managed to open for the given trade. We've managed to open the trade ID. Otherwise, we need to do, again, I keep repeating, something rather serious. In our case, we'll just log that we failed to open the trade in question. So deep breath, the code's on GitHub, uh, and that's what we need to do to write the trade manager class. We need now to integrate it inside our bot. Now, I've made a couple of changes at the top of the trading bot already. Uh, I've changed the name of the log um, that was up here. I can't remember what it's called, bot trading or something. It's now just called bot. Then the next one's just called technicals. And I've made another log called trade log. And this one is called trade. What we're going to do below the OANDA API then is create a new instance of our trade manager, sending in our API the settings and also a reference to our trade log. Now, of course, that means at the top, just above the granularity where we've declared the uh, the variable here or the constant, um, we're going to from trade manager import our trade manager. Otherwise, the bot doesn't know what it is that we're trying to make here. We need to use this trade manager down inside this process pairs to be actually to actually be able to define what we want to do. So we're going to make a new list called trades to make, and this list will be filled with each of the trades for each of the pairs where we identify a trade. So instead of this hash make trade here, we're going to say trades to make dot append, and we'll just append this simple object, which has the units and the pair on it, which is what we'll send uh, into our trade manager. So when we go to our trade manager, I'll just go back here. You remember that we have 
the pair and the units keys here. Now maybe you want to make yourself a class to do this a little bit neater, but we can leave this as an object like this. So once all that logic has run, what should happen is we should have a list here of all of the pairs and number of units that we actually want to trade. So the first thing to do then is to ask ourselves the question, do we have more than one item in this list? If so, then what we're going to do is going to print it to the console and then ask our trade manager to place the trades with our trades to make. Down inside the run, I'm going to delete this update's timings, I'm going to delete this process pairs, and I'm going to delete this sleep. I'm going to make the assumption that's more or less all running properly because I'd just like to see in the console when the decision is made to actually make a trade. So there's been a little bit of an edit there because you're probably screaming at the screen that I really forgot something stupid. I forgot to actually call the create trades functionality at the end of the place trades function here. So in place trades in trade manager.py, we actually, once we've closed, need to then create our trades. That was a, a bit of a, a silly error, which has just cost me a few minutes. So into the console, this is the second time I'm running this, to be honest. Um, we'll run it again and things seem to have started up. I'm just going to go back and check in the logs. OK, we're all good. And I'm going to wait for a trade and just edit it out so you don't have to sit they're looking but it shouldn't take more than two minutes or so okay and we have one we should have a buy on the euro pound and we can see in oanda that we do have a buy open on the euro pound and let's go into the log so here we can see okay obviously the candles were found if we go into the technicals can i find it uh euro pound here's the euro pound train decision here was a buy and if we go into our trade log we can see that it was told to place this trade the page the pairs to close with the euro pound there were no open trades at the time no ids to close and now it's open trade 640 was the id everything was okay with the api and we've opened our trade so that's our bot up and running and trading it's pretty exciting so hopefully this code is actually working but what i'm going to do now you won't see it you're going to see obviously an edit but i'm actually going to pause the video for myself and then I'm going to leave this running for a while and then come back and uh, see whether the bot has managed to actually make a few trades. Please remember this is actually a, on a completely crazy strategy of one minute candles and uh, trading every, I think it's two crossing eight or something ridiculous like that. The idea is just to get more and more trades up and running. OK, so we're back. And as you can see on the console here, we've logged uh, a lot of trades, a lot of things been going on. I'm just going to flick to Oanda here and drag up the activity here so we can see that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six trades actually open. So as expected, every pair is trading away. That's good. And if we look at the activity, we can see uh, what's been going on. So we've had, um, oh, we can actually try and count them. Actually, I'll go back a little bit. So we've had a loss and a win and a loss and a loss and a loss and a loss and a loss, small, and a loss and a loss and a loss and a loss. And a loss and a loss. Not looking too good, is it? Which is my experience really with uh, the moving average cross strategy anyway. Interestingly, I ran this a few days ago and actually I ran it for a few hours and actually made a very, very big uh, plus, which is rather surprising. But here it's looking to me like uh, at the moment anyway, it's making quite a loss, which is no surprise on one minute candles with a very silly strategy. So let's jump into the logs. So you can see that we've got uh, lots and lots of information here. So we've got the main log just showing whenever it's found new candles being available the technicals log. We've already got, what have we got here? Not very much longer. We've already got 1700 lines in here as well of information. So we can go back and find for exactly every single trade that was made as to why it was made. And then we've also got our trading log here, where you can, now you can see that when we want to trade, we've got the IDs that need to be closed. So here's one, for example, we're pay, placing uh, pound yen, euro pound, and it says we've got uh, some trades already open, so we need to close those. Those were closed, and then we've gone and opened the trades again and got some new IDs. So we have then a bot actually up and running, and you've got here uh, the basic skeleton really to develop something much bigger and much more robust yourself. But uh, what I wanted to do was give you the idea of how you might go about at least setting something up for testing, setting something up to calculate your strategies and the technicals, and then setting something up to uh, manage your trades. So here on in, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to calculate the risk and the margin for when you want to actually place a trade, because a few people have written to me asking for that. And we're actually going to put this bot onto a cloud service, probably Amazon or DigitalOcean or something like that. But I'd like to spend a video just showing how you might go about setting that uh, up. And then we'll probably wrap up with just this explanation of the outline of the infrastructure that I actually use uh, in, in real life. 
So hopefully you've enjoyed that and uh, you should be really, really proud and pleased of yourself um, if you've got this far and suffered all of these videos until now. But what you've got here is really a good starting point for building your own automated uh, trading system. So thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video.